total knee replacement. Today we are going to be covering some of the important things that you should know before you have your total knee replacement surgery, such as the anatomy of the knee, the surgical procedure, how to prepare for surgery, what to expect during your hospital stay, preliminary exercises, and the equipment you will need after surgery. The most common conditions of the knee that can lead to a joint replacement include osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and prior knee injury. The anatomy of a healthy knee. Three bones form the knee joint, the femur, tibia, and patella. Cartilage covers your bones. It acts as a shock absorber and allows the bones to glide over each other. Cartilage is responsible for making synovial fluid, which is the clear fluid inside of the knee. The medial and lateral meniscus absorb shock every time weight is placed through the knee and help provide stability to the knee. Finally, the four ligaments surrounding the knee provide stability by preventing the knee from moving too far in any one direction. In an osteoarthritic knee, there are three things that make the damaged knee painful and hard to move. These things are the cartilage on the ends of your bones gets rough and worn away, the slippery synovial fluid begins to dry up, the muscles weaken, and the knee gets stiff. A total knee replacement surgery replaces the damaged part of your knee with a metal and plastic implant. The goal of the surgery is to increase your function and knee range of motion, improve your quality of life, and decrease pain. It can take up to a full year to recover from joint replacement surgery. Before surgery, there are many things you can do to help you prepare and ensure a positive outcome. Patient reported outcome measures. The PROMS asks about your level of pain, your functional status, how well you manage daily life, your overall quality of life, and your orthopedic care. You will be asked to complete the survey one month before surgery, three months, and one year after surgery. You will need your health card to complete it. If you are registered with Seamless MD, you will receive a reminder when you need to complete it. Your input will help improve the patient experience. Seamless MD is an interactive, step by step guide to help you prepare for your procedure and help you to recover more quickly after. It can be accessed by you and or a care partner by smartphone, tablet, or computer. It gives you the opportunity to stay connected with your healthcare team before and after surgery. A member of our healthcare team will reach out to you by phone if they have not already and obtain an email to sign you up and give you access to these benefits. Seamless MD will guide you through three stages of your surgery, before your procedure, in hospital, and back at home. The app will facilitate communication with and enable remote monitoring of patients by the orthopedic nurse practitioner, working as an extension of the orthopedic surgeons. Let's talk about some of the preparation you can do before surgery to make your recovery easier. Arrange a care partner. Prepare a list of medications, medical conditions, and allergies. Get in shape for your surgery. Plan a ride home from the hospital the same day as your surgery or the next day. Get your home ready. Pack for your hospital stay if required. Get your equipment in place. You should begin physical therapy within seven days of discharge from the hospital. Book this appointment before your surgery. Preparing your home for your recovery after surgery can help prevent accidents and increase your independence. Prepare two weeks' worth of meals. Move commonly used items to counter height. Arrange animal care, snow removal, and yard maintenance. Remove tripping hazards, loose cords, throw rugs, clutter. Set up your recovery area. Cell phone, Kleenex, book, pain medication. Install light fixtures or floodlights to illuminate entrances, steps, and walkways. Install railings on your stairs. You will be discharged home the same day or the next day after your knee replacement surgery. Your recovery after your knee replacement is directly related to early functional movement such as going to the bathroom, couch to dining table, couch to bed, going up and down the stairs. 
Moving your knee will help with your post-operative pain, stiffness, and swelling. Your post-op pain will be well controlled with an indwelling catheter. It is placed in your leg during surgery. It releases a freezing agent into your leg that helps reduce your pain after surgery. It lasts approximately 60 hours. This intervention, in addition to early movement, will help reduce your pain after surgery. Pre-admission visit. Your pre-admission appointment is scheduled up to three weeks before surgery. There are four locations for this appointment. When you get an appointment, the scheduler will let you know which location you are attending. If you cannot go in person, you will get a telemedicine appointment through the Ontario Telemedicine Network. This appointment may last two to six hours. You will learn how to prepare for your procedure, what medicine you need to start or stop before your procedure, about using a chlorhexidine soap, and any tests you need to do before surgery. You will be able to attend a pre-op rehabilitation class if you live near Thunder Bay, Dryden, and Kenora. To prepare for this appointment, you should bring a list of all your medicines, vitamins, supplements, and herbal products. Bring a list of all your health issues and allergies, past surgeries, and any questions you may have. Do not bring anyone to this appointment with you. If you need to bring someone, call your healthcare team before your appointment. You can eat, drink, and take your normal medicines before this appointment. If your nurse gave you special instructions, follow theirs instead. Take a shower or bath the night before and wash the leg you are having surgery on with the chlorhexidine sponge or antimicrobial soap. Do not shave the area of the surgery. Do not eat or drink anything after midnight the night before surgery. You may drink clear fluids until 6 a.m. the day of your surgery. Examples of clear fluids include coffee or tea, no cream, milk, or sugar, water, and Gatorade. Do not wear any makeup, lipstick, nail polish, or body piercing items. Pack your hospital bag a pair of comfortable, well-fitted shoes with non-skid soles, shorts or loose-fitting jogging pants, walker, canes, or crutches with your name label on it, copies of your insurance cards, health card, status card, advanced medical directives, and medical history, a list of any medications you regularly take. Leave your cash, credit cards, and jewelry at home. Wash the operative leg with the chlorhexidine sponge or antimicrobial soap before coming to the hospital. You will be prepared for surgery in the surgical day care unit. The nurse will assess and review your preparation. Before surgery, the nurse will start IV antibiotics to prevent infection. Refer to Seamless MD or your Total Knee Replacement Education Booklet for more details. Your hospital stay. You should plan to be ready to be sent home the same day of your surgery. The day of surgery, your physiotherapist will come see you to review breathing exercises, your home exercise program. You will practice walking with a walker or crutches and practice stairs if required. You will be ready to be discharged home the same day. After you are sent home, you will be responsible for caring for your incision. You will need to keep the wound clean and dry. Try not to get the incision wet until 24 hours after you have the staples removed, 12 to 14 days after the surgery. You can shower after your surgery as the dressing is waterproof. The dressing is not waterproof if there's blood leaking from the sides. In this case, replace the bandage before showering. Seven days after your surgery, you will need to remove the dressing and replace it with a waterproof bandage. It should stay on for another seven days until your first follow-up visit, usually on your telemedicine or fracture clinic appointment around day 14. You will also have to watch for signs of infection. These include increased redness and warmth around the incision, swelling or puffiness, drainage from the incision, increased pain, and a fever higher than 38.5 degrees Celsius. If you have any of these signs, tell your surgeon or doctor right away. 
If you are registered with Seamless MD, contact the nurse practitioner if you have any concerns about your incision. You have a few appointments to attend after discharge from the hospital. Your first follow-up appointment is 12 to 14 days after surgery. This appointment may be done in fracture clinic, specialty clinics, or by telehealth. You may be seen by the surgeon or the advanced practice physiotherapist. At this time, a member of the healthcare team will remove your staples. Additional follow-up appointments are determined by your surgeon. Your outpatient physiotherapy assessment should occur exactly one week after your procedure. You should have this booked before your surgery. You may have a nerve block catheter in place. This is a small tube that goes under the skin in the leg that is attached to a non-electric plastic bottle. This pump infuses freezing medication into the leg to reduce pain where you had your surgery. This pump will usually last 60 hours or two and a half days after it is inserted. Before discharge, your healthcare team will give you instructions on how to remove the catheter yourself when it is empty. Swelling is a normal side effect following surgery. Swelling after surgery can be managed with rest, ice, elevation, and gradual return to activities. Ankle pump exercises may also help with swelling post-surgery. It is normal to have some swelling after exercise or doing your therapeutic exercise program. It is also normal to have lower extremity swelling after surgery. However, if you have sudden shortness of breath, sharp chest pain that is worse with a deep breath or cough, redness in your leg or surgical site, a sudden onset of calf pain. This may represent a venous thromboembolism or leg clot. You should go to your closest emergency department or call 911 and be taken immediately to the emergency room. It is safe to walk after surgery but let pain and swelling be your guide. You have to gradually increase your activity tolerance. It is important not to substitute walking for your therapeutic home exercise program as prescribed by your rehabilitation team. These exercises are important to increase your strength, range of motion, and balance. Remember, full recovery for a hip or knee replacement takes up to one year. These are the preliminary exercises that you can do before your surgery and immediately after. They will be progressed by your physiotherapist when you attend your physiotherapy sessions. Ankle pumps. Slowly move your ankle up and down. Do this as often as you can or 50 times every hour. Deep breathing and cough. Take 10 deep breaths followed by a cough. Do this every hour that you are awake. Make this part of your daily routine until you are up and moving well. Static quadriceps strength. Tighten the muscles on the front of your operated thigh into the bed. Hold for five seconds. Chair knee flexion. Sitting on the bed or chair. Slide your heel under the seat to bend your operated knee as much as possible. Try to keep your foot flat on the floor. Hold for five seconds. Straight leg raise. Tighten your thigh muscles and lift your leg while keeping it straight. Quad over roll. With a roll under your knee, straighten your knee by tightening your thigh muscles. Hold for five seconds. Assisted knee bend. Cross the non-operated ankle over the operated ankle and use it to help bend the operated knee. Enhanced knee bend. With your operated leg bent and your foot planted on the floor, slide your buttocks forward in the chair or bed to help bend your knee and feel a stretch. Sitting knee extension. Sitting on a chair, tighten the muscles on the front of your thigh to straighten your operated knee. 
Hold for five seconds. Lower your legs slowly with control. Sitting knee straightening. Stretch your operated leg out with the heel on the floor. Push with your hands above your knee to straighten your knee as much as possible. These exercises should be performed 10 times, 3 to 4 times a day. Hold each exercise for 5 seconds. You should also ice your knee for 15 to 20 minutes every 1 to 2 hours to manage swelling. When icing, make sure to put a pillowcase between your skin and the ice to prevent burning or frostbite of the skin. Pain needs to be well controlled in order to complete your home exercise program and have a positive surgical outcome. If you're not getting adequate pain relief, please contact your surgeon. If you are registered with Seamless MD, you may contact the nurse practitioner. To set up your home safely for your recovery, we recommend that you have some equipment. A walker is necessary to allow you to walk after the surgery. Please bring it to the hospital with you on the day of your surgery so that the rehabilitation team can fit you properly and teach you how to use it. A cane is useful to help you with going up and down the stairs after the surgery and later on for walking when a walker is no longer necessary. A bath bench or bath seat is recommended for bathing. A raised toilet seat is recommended if you have a lower toilet. If you borrow a walker from a friend, make sure that it is the correct height for you. You can do this by standing tall, keeping your arms at your sides, and ensuring that the walker handle is the same height as your wrist or where your watch should be. There are resources online at rjac.ca and with Seamless MD if you are registered. If you still have any questions or concerns, please reach out to your surgeon's office, the Regional Joint Assessment Centre in Thunder Bay, or your pre-admission clinic for further assistance.